policy brief presents a concise summary of information about a topical issue and the potential policy options to tackle it. It is aimed at various stakeholders that design, implement, or try to influence the policy-making process. Such stakeholders include government agencies, think tanks, civil society organizations, etc. Typically, the length of a policy brief ranges from 700 to 3,000 words. Policy briefs can be divided into two categories, objective briefs and advocacy briefs. Objective briefs, as the name suggests, present the potential and possibly conflicted available policies in a balanced way, not trying to promote a specific policy or policy orientation. Therefore, their aim is to lay out the various policies to the policymakers in order for them to choose the ones they see fit. On the other hand, advocacy briefs support a specific course of action to deal with the issue at hand. Both types of policy briefs are perfectly fine, given that they adhere to the ethical standards that come with them. For example, in an advocacy brief, the researcher is expected to present all the facts and recognize potential limitations or obstacles concerning the recommended policies. Before you start writing a policy brief, there is work to be done. Collect an initial bibliography by searching in literature databases such as Google Scholar and using keywords. Aim for both literature review articles, especially systematic literature reviews, and empirical analyses. Also, make sure that they are relatively recent. In this way, we get a good first impression of the scientific debate on a topic, which aspects of it have been exhausted, where there is a difference in opinion and academic debate, where there is a gap in the literature. Although there may be some differences in the structure of an academic manuscript, depending on whether it is a scientific paper, a policy brief, a technical report, etc., most sections stay the same and, most importantly, the underlying principles stay the same too. In this section, the main parts of an academic manuscript are analyzed. The introduction is vital for any piece of academic scientific work, as it is the first section that the prospective audience will read, before even deciding whether they will proceed to read the rest of the manuscript. Therefore, it has to be engaging. An introduction can be, in principle, broken into the following components. Firstly, a general statement that introduces the general topic, and sets the background for the arguments that will follow. The general statement also aims to get the reader's interest by showing why this topic is important. Secondly, definitions and other information in order to set the framework of the discussion and avoid misunderstandings. This may include statistics, trends, or events that have brought the issue to the forefront. Thirdly, the thesis statement introduces the key elements of your argument. Finally, the roadmap tells the reader what to expect to see in the rest of the policy brief and in what order. It's the structure of the essay, briefly presenting the sections that follow. The research overview section of a policy brief provides a summary of the key research findings that are relevant to the policy issue being addressed. This section typically includes a brief review of the literature, the research methods used, and the main findings and conclusions of the research. It is important to make sure that the research overview section is relevant to the policy issue being addressed in the policy brief. The information presented should be directly related to the policy issue and should provide evidence to support the policy recommendations that will be presented in the later sections of the brief. The discussion section provides an in-depth analysis of the research findings and their implications for the policy issue at hand. This section should aim to answer the so what question explaining why the findings are important and how they relate to the policy recommendations that will be presented later in the document. Analyze the findings in more detail, explaining what they mean in the context of the policy issue. This may include discussing the causes and consequences of the issue, the impact of the issue on different stakeholders, or the strengths and limitations of the findings. Also, explain how the findings support or challenge existing policies or practices, and how they can inform the development of new policies or interventions. The policy recommendations section of a policy brief outlines specific actions that policymakers can take to address the policy issue discussed in the brief. This section should be based on the analysis of the research findings presented earlier in the document, and should be specific, actionable, and evidence-based. Clearly outline the policy recommendations, making sure they are well-structured, feasible, and effective. Provide evidence to support each recommendation, such as statistics or examples of successful policies from other contexts. 
Finally, be honest about any limitations or uncertainties in the evidence and avoid making overly simplistic or unrealistic recommendations. The conclusion section of a policy brief is an opportunity to summarize the main findings and recommendations of the document and reiterate their importance. This section should be concise, clear, and persuasive and should leave the reader with a clear sense of the significance of the policy issue and the urgency of the recommendations. Start the section by restating the purpose of the policy brief and summarizing the key findings and recommendations presented in the document. Next, provide a clear and compelling argument for why the policy issue discussed in the brief is important and why action is urgently needed. This may include highlighting the potential consequences of inaction or emphasizing the potential benefits of implementing the recommended policies. Finally, it is also important to acknowledge any limitations or uncertainties in the evidence presented in the brief. The role of an abstract in a policy brief is to provide a very concise and accurate summary of the main points. Its main purpose is to help readers quickly determine whether the policy brief is relevant to their interests and worth reading in full. To write an effective abstract, you should firstly identify the purpose of your policy brief. This will help you to focus your writing and ensure that your abstract accurately reflects the key messages of your brief. Next, highlight the main findings and conclusions of your policy brief. Make sure they are clearly articulated. Additionally, summarize your policy recommendations. This can include a list of the key policy solutions that you are proposing or a brief summary of the main strategies that you are advocating for. The length of an abstract is usually anywhere between 100 to 250 words.